My name is Graham O'Donnell, and today we're going to talk about commitment and mistakes. Um, there are a lot of initiatives going on on Cornell's campus all the time. So many, in fact, that it's definitely difficult to know which ones are relevant to you, which ones you really want to commit time to, and which ones even exist anymore at all. Um, one of those initiatives that I worked on this summer is the Corn or Cornell's Green Your Lab certification program. Just out of curiosity, does anyone here know anything about the Green Lab certification program? You don't count because you worked with me this summer. <laughs> All right, cool. According to the statistics we have, your hand should also be down. Um, because about halfway through the summer, um, my boss, Sarah Berlinski, came in, sat me down in a meeting, and she said, Graham, we have a problem <laughs> with the Green Lab certification program. And I was like, well, what is that? She said, there's been no new interaction with the program for three years. So that means that in three years, no new labs have enrolled in this program, and the labs that are currently enrolled in the program haven't completed any new tasks. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about the program, the Green Lab Certification Program is an incentivization program that rewards laboratories for implementing best practices um, in their workplace. And so there are different categories of tasks, like freezers, chemicals, transportation. Um, and those tasks have points, the points get accumulated when they're completed, that leads to a rank, the rank gives them a certification and a sticker, the sticker goes on the door, the door tells people they're sustainable, best practices proliferate, humanity is saved, you know? But that doesn't really work if no one's joining the program. And so I said, wow, I'm halfway through a very short internship program, what can I do? This sounds like a mammoth task. And Sarah told me, um, I really need from you, I just want you to revamp and redesign the physical materials, the things re like um, relating to this program that will be posted in break rooms, offices, labs, and I want you to take them, make them new, shiny, hopefully they'll catch some people's attention and they'll start to, you know, pay attention to this program and they'll get enrolled in it. And I said, all right, what do we have right now? And she said, oh, we have plenty of materials. There's actually a printable for every single category in the list. They all look something like this. Now, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad way to represent the information for the Green Lab program, but it's also not really the ideal way to get someone to learn about your program if they're in the break room. I, I could critique it for a while. The font's really small. The colors are not even the ones that our program is relative to. Um, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the point I'm trying to get across is that I had a lot of work. So I said, what is a reasonable first step? And Sarah was like, well, I came from the MIT Office of Sustainability. We had a pretty good thing going for us there. Why don't you just take a couple weeks and benchmark and look at what other premier institutions are doing? That's what Liz was talking about with the Ivy Plus, a lot of benchmarking. So I looked around at um, a lot of institutions. Some of these are up here, more of them um, were on a presentation that Liz and I did this summer. Um, and the materials all followed the same sort of minimalistic, lightweight, very sleek uh, format. And while there may have been variations between all of them, none of them looked anything close to this. So we were like, a plan arose to take all of the information that was crammed on these materials and put them onto our sustainability website because the Green Lab certification website prior to my redesign looked like this. It's very sparse. There's not a lot to go off of there. So we took all of the information that was crammed on these printables and we added them into the website and fleshed out the content there. And as the content moved off of the printables and onto the website, I started to look at ways to redesign it. Um, and that involved you know, picking new layout, looking at which lists um, criteria was really the most relevant to show, researching statistics that would catch people's attention, coming up with matching art, cute stuff, right? And um, near the end of July, I had a rotation of printables that looked like this. My boss was really, really proud of it. I was really, really proud of it. I enjoyed it. And we were about to move on to the next step when Kim Anderson, who's another one of our higher ups said, hey, have you guys passed this by anyone who actually works in a lab here? And we went, no, why would we do that? It's working for MIT, it's working for Duke, why wouldn't it work for us? And she was like, you should probably get Ellen Sweet on the phone. I don't know if any of you know Ellen Sweet, but she is sort of the, the public face of the Green Lab program, for lack of a better term. If you send an email to the Green Lab email asking to enroll or asking for like any sort of help or guidance, it's going to pop up in her inbox. So you're like, hey, why don't you bring some lab workers down to our office and we'll put these printables in front of them and see how they feel. 
Um, we got down here and they said, oh, these materials look great, um, but they're just not how we would want uh, information presented to us. And we said, what do you mean? So it turns out that people who work in labs like numbers. They are process oriented. A lot of the requests that came to us were like, can we have justification through statistics? We're not going to follow your directions or your suggestions if you don't have some sort of quantifiable um, backup for that. We're also very, there's a protocol for everything in a lab from how you turn off your computer to how you conduct an experiment. And so they were like, if we can't see the cause and effect relationship quickly on the material that we're trying to absorb, we're going to discredit it a little bit. And the format of the one pagers ended up looking something uh, similar to this. And it really messed with our timetable because as you can see on the right side, even it's a final fact, but um, I had to look up more statistics. I had to go back through the lab criteria and look at what content needed to come onto the one pager um, to justify those cause and effects and just reformat. And it agitated our timeline to the point that when it was time for me to leave the sustainability office, these one pagers were still under revision. And there's something to be said here for really committing to an audience, you know? A lot of time was spent benchmarking, but at the end of the day, our materials, were, we weren't designing these printables to give them to Duke. We weren't designing these printables to go, hey, Yale, look at what we did here. And the fact of the matter is that, you know, there is a balancing act that needs to be struck in projects when uh, you are gearing someone, or when you are gearing a product towards an audience and that focus needs to be maintained throughout. So while there is value in seeing what the status quo is, there is always something to be said. I know Lauren said it in the spring ad nauseum, but you need to know your audience. Um, and that's the number one rule. Thank you.